Hi guys. <coughs> so part three. Uh, once again, as always, as I keep saying, don't forget to you know like and share. Um, thanks to everybody out there for the support. So here we go. As I said, you probably hopefully seen the first couple of videos about water. So from the inside of your van, uh, on the passenger side, what you're going to see is this. Uh, obviously it's facing that way and easy access is just take out the screws to the glove compartment that will give you the access into here and then this just basically rotates with a bit of effort and it fans out simple as that so you want to be sort of you can run the 12 volt live um, to the fan just to check that it's it's working okay. I know this one is. Probably give it a good clean while you're at it. Lubricate the bearing if you want. That's as simple as it gets. Um, and as I've said from the one video earlier is that this scuttle tray, or this that fits under the scuttle tray, this is the air pollen uh, filter. That bottom seal that goes around there where it bolts onto the bulkhead. Uh, obviously the water tracks behind there sometimes um, but mine wasn't mine was coming in the top and as you've seen now from that other video hopefully that that little plastic thing that I just invented works so that's the end of that really um, there's all your main source of leaks on that side and then your um, heater resistor that just clips in there looks like that common obviously if you've had a leak water gets down there gets into that thing electric goes through it bang that's it that's the end of that so as I said on a well-known um, auction site you can get cheapens for a 10 then the next stage up is about 20 quid or unless you buy a German one and that's 65 quid so that's your heater resistor and then finally just coming down to what I said about the ECU, if you've got tons of corrosion over here, all over the place, it might be alright, but there's a good chance that it, it's going to be contaminated, which is why sometimes you change the 109 relay uh, and you change the brake light pedal switch or both, which depending on which caddy you've got, uh, and you still get this coil light thing and maybe a few other little things going on, there's a good chance that your ECU's been contaminated. Um, so assuming it's not, and assuming that you, prior to the position I was in earlier where I explained about the 5 litre plastic cover and all that lot, just clean your pins in there with a cotton earbud um, and some methylated spirits, you know, make sure the contacts are all good. I put a smear, a nice smear of silicon grease around there before I put my um, pin connectors back in and clip it all in. Um, the other thing... And I did mention it in another video, but I'll still keep talking about it because I didn't know. Which is this, that I described as a grommet. It's actually got a slit in it, and then there's a little like mesh piece behind it. And so under there, what you've got is an air pressure sensor, which is why these things apparently have to be outside. Because if you bring it inside the van, then the air pressure it monitors will change the reading the ECU gets. Apparently, um, someone else might confirm that, I don't know. It kind of makes sense, you know, that if you're at an altitude or uh, whatever, then that, that would probably affect the mixture, perhaps, I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's the deal with the ECU. It's pretty straightforward, really. Um, once you've sorted your water problems out, um, then you can start concentrating on that. So it's really, this is just what you're going to have to do in winter. And the same with the linkages outside that I said on the windscreen wiper. Again, it's common sense, you know, lift the... If you've got a load of crud in your scuttle, um, which I assume most of you have, and leaves and everything like that, just clear it all out. Clear them all out before you start this process, because otherwise you're just working in dirt and more muck. Um, and I think it's pretty common, to be honest with you, on, on these things that you're going to get a build-up of dirt. Uh, and especially if it's like mine, where it's been stood for what 18 months um so basically that is kind of that really um 
as I said, the clips that hold everything together, um, when you're taking that scuttle apart, is watch for, where's the, where is it there, these things, see them? They fit through the plastic scuttle trim and spring into the metal slot that's on just below the windscreen and then obviously these things they then screw in and we all know how much fun they are um, and that expands that and that's what keeps that plastic trim in but as I said when we're removing it you need two items you need something to go under that because you've got to physically pull that as you're unscrewing it but don't lose them because yeah uh, and they're dead easy to lose dead easy to lose <laughs> I'll tell you that uh, and they're also good at snapping um, you know the them things um, so I guess I'm lucky really because each time I've you know broken a caddy up uh, I've managed to collect a nice big bag of all the little plastic clips and grommets and things like that that snap um, so yeah there we go uh, oh and then just very briefly I'm, I'm not going to cover this one today otherwise we'll be here all week but your should you ever have the unfortunate position of having to deal with this heater control flap in here which is like a sponge on it that's deteriorating as we speak uh, it's all attached mechanically by the main console there so you've got your three cables on um, that operate the various vent systems very awkward thing um, yeah should you ever get a heater control flap problem in there unfortunately it's a dashboard out because I don't think even when you take the centre console out and everything the bit that you need this bit here you can't get to it uh, and also um, that heater control matrix there that's you know Obviously that pokes through the pipes that you see here. They're the ones that you see on the other side of your bulkhead, inside your engine bay. So it's like to get this out. Oh man, yeah, I don't even want to think. Uh, right, I think that just about covers everything for today. Three videos, all in fairly short succession. Um, don't forget if you've got any comments or questions. Um, yeah, don't forget. Like, share. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, I'll catch you all with the next update. Bye for now.